future, hopefully. And I will show you what we have done recently and share with you some of the ideas that we have. So, about myself, um, most of you know me, but uh, I'm running a company, Sartura. Uh, I'm also an WRT developer, and since the team has grown to 10 people now, um, you could say that I'm not doing so much work hands-on, and that's, that's a fact. So that's why we have this last bullet here. Um, so, building open WRT images. Um, not much fun there, right? Um, building requires time, so be mindful of your time and be mindful of your colleagues' time and try to solve that as easily as possible, right? Then, as you could have picked up from Davar's presentation, um, we work with a lot of customers, so you might have been doing something also wrong in this process of, of building the images. And uh, last point, like I said, I will share what's going to come. Okay, so some of the use cases to be considered uh, when building images, and that is, so you can build it for one product, you can build it for many products, you can just build it for fun. You can, want to make uh, for a series of devices that you have, which are maybe not necessarily in the same target. Um, you might need to build an image when a customer request comes in. Okay, I want the image with this bug fix in, right? You can build image on every Git commit, or you can do it like periodically, either nightly builds or weekly, or however your uh, workflow works. Um, you can also make uh, debug images, you can make production images. And also you can make uh, OpenWRT snapshots and releases and, and other things. So these are things um, which uh, intervene. So uh, depends on what you actually want to do or need to do, depends on uh, how you will set up your infrastructure. So definitely at the start, uh, somebody had to manual build images, like go to make menu config and select the packages that they have. Um, some, somewhere along the line, um, this was already in OpenWRT when I joined, there is this nice tool that uh, not many people know about. It's uh, script CNV. So basically it's a Git repository for your um, changes uh, that you make to config file. So it makes it uh, relatively easy to switch from configuration uh, A to configuration B to see what has changed from point in time uh, to another point in time and so on. Um, Zoltan has been maintaining the uh, build boots for a while and uh, thank you Zoltan. Uh, before it was in somebody else's hands um, but now Zoltan is handling that for the OpenWRT side. Um, these build bots uh, build nightly images and they land on downloads.openwrt.org. We also, um, to be honest, uh, often keep ignoring the messages on IRC that some build have failed, but at least we have them there. Um, in actual, this has offered um, limited build testing, right? So we don't build everything for for all the packages, so rather limited, so most popular targets are built. And um, there is no runtime testing. Uh, so Eric is uh, leading from Purple uh, Board Farm. And um, yeah, so we should, we should discuss this more, how this can be used in the mainline projects and uh, make better use, use from it. Okay, so I thought we should fix this, and um, there are some use cases, obviously, within the company where we actually need this. So we've picked this technology, Drone.io. It's a basically a Docker-based solution where on top of the drone.yaml file, you are able to build an image, right? Um, Company-wise and business-wise, it works well with GitHub and Bitbucket, so you can, um, when somebody makes a pull request or something, um, get a notification and then the build starts. Um, in order to not include the drone.yaml file into the OpenWRT and to make it like 
um, not uh, that we are targeting a certain certain um, uh, solution like drone, right? Uh, we've patched it and uh, made some customizations to these solutions. Um, from OpenWRT side, so because I didn't want that we have like a single account, so we have this OpenWRT Ninja GitHub account, which is a ghost account. Um, and at the moment, dev config is built for every pull request. So I have some pictures. So if you go to OpenWRT site, you basically see uh, this when you see go to pull request. So this thing right here is uh, failed uh, default build, and these ones are successful ones. So once you make a pull request, what happens, uh, you see this in your pull request. Some checks haven't compiled yet. Uh, and you see this, this message. So in drone 4, 0 0.4, sorry, uh, it's rather hard to customize this string. And what I will talk about later is to have more of these builds and uh, do by different architectures and so on. So to recap, uh, once you start, once you make a pull request, um, this uh, drone auto built for uh, default config of OpenWRT is kicked off, then you can have either this result or hopefully this result. Okay. Um, on the drone I/O instance, uh, you can see uh, what's actually been going on. What are the uh, success and failures uh, happened? Uh, which builds are running? Right. Uh, both successful builds and uh, failed ones. Uh, you can restart. And uh, once you go in and see what 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 was going on, uh, basically you see. Uh, this terminal window, which I've really uh, shortened, but it goes all the way down. We found some bugs. So if you build OpenWRT with uh, capital V equals S to get a verbose output, uh, it's not actually shown. So we've uh, removed V equals S in order to see some output and see where the, if, if there is breakage where it is. And uh, yeah, you can see whether it was uh, successful and so on. So that are the basic things we have now uh, working. Uh, also, uh, we had some um, down, um, we had some issues, and the uh, good thing was that people were starting to complain. So why why <laughs> drone is not working? Why why the builds are failing? So people are actually looking looking into this. So I'd like to come uh, to talk about a few things. So I have two slides. One is these section items. So this is what I would um, like for us to have really like near, and we know how to do it. So run all, build, all builds for uh, every commit or every pull request, like for every architecture. Um, have an infrastructure so one can easily test things. So we get a pull request for a package, and then um, I either have to rebuild it or do some additional manual work while I would like to just reuse this build that already built this stuff and, and uh, test whether it went okay or not. Also there are some optimizations of the build process so we can, we can, uh, we are now building uh, all the tool chains, downloading all the sources so we can optimize this process. It's not necessarily that we need to uh, on every commit, uh, build toolchain from scratch. Also, we, it would be good that we have mirror for sources so we don't go actually every time o online uh, to third party sites and also to mirror all of these uh, source, source packages on the uh, some site. So, in case uh, mainline site goes down, you can fetch the sources and deal with that. Okay, so basically, this was done all. All of this work, uh, more or less, by by Mac working in the company, and uh, this what you can see here uh, in this uh, OpenWRT Ninja account where we we, we keep this thing hosted. Um, all the other architectures that we will start with and later on add to them. Um, so, if you remember for, for from the picture that I shown before. So we will write for which architecture uh, the build was successful 
was it uh, AR 71XX full image or minimal image or X86 or the other ones. So we'll just keep adding and then adding more servers. So um, at some point, if you are able to donate uh, drone IO running instance, please please get back in touch so we can get you on board. Okay, and I also have some uh, wish list that it would be good that we have within the project. Um, that's fine grain package building in the feeds. So somebody makes a pull request for a package. Um, I want to check whether um, that pull request is okay. So build that package only and its dependencies and uh, not have the, bi um, the build fail because some other third party unrelated package broke. So just fine grain tun tuning. Um, automated testing in Docker based on uh, image deployment. So after the build is done, for example, it would be nice to have this root FS uploaded to Docker Hub so I can check whether everything is working okay. So just like pull the image, uh, see whether that binary is there, if it runs, right? So it will definitely make uh, life easier. Also, some of you may know, but uh, package maintainers do get emails when there is uh, security issues like CVEs issued for certain version of software packages or when there is a new new um, upstream version of a package okay so uh, I don't know SSH version 6 becomes 6.1 uh, so there is uh, community has written some tools uh, so the developers can get email and then act on it um, well, I'm going to say 70%, but that's a number from my head without real numbers. But I would say roughly 70% of the package upgrades can be actually made uh, just by bumping the version and just by uh, changing the uh, MD5 hash uh, of the package. So I think in 70% cases, that is the, the change you are making to OpenWRT when you upgrade the package from version A to version B. And this could really be automated. So uh, same as we get email, hey, there is a new um, upstream uh, package version. Hey, there is a new upstream package version. Here is the automated uh, pull request. And hey, drone IO will build this pull request. And you can automatically do download it from Docker, see if it's working, and just click a button and see this change merge, right? Um, and this also, it would be good to have uh, uh, Docker for debug and develop mode. So, for example, um, we can fix things, okay? So that's what we have been doing and we can fix things that are not working. But the time to get to a setup where you have the necessary tools in place to make, uh, to address the issue takes time. So you need to build a tool chain, you need to uh, have all the sources uh, downloaded, you need to get to that point where the error is happening. And that's, uh, if you are building from source, that's a process that will take up to an hour or two. And uh, I simply don't see a reason uh, to, to go over an hour or two of work just to fix some uh, trivial issue, right? So I think we can address those also by using Docker. So if some build fails, let's save this build state somewhere. Thank you. Save this build state somewhere and um, give access to, to anybody who is able to fix this thing. And yeah, they will just do their magic. So these are the kind of ideas that I think projects uh, would benefit from. And yeah, that's, that's mostly it. Thank you. Any questions, maybe, or ideas, or suggestions? So minimal is like just select a target and a board. Uh -huh, sorry. So Kati asked, uh, what's the difference between full and minimal? So uh, minimal is when you just select the target, uh, default board and uh, don't select any additional packages, so like bare minimum. Uh, basically, you will get a bootable OpenWRT image, but without any 
packages, which are not the default ones. While the full is, you build everything, so every package, every kernel module, etc. So, what we've seen uh, in the past when some kernel module is added, uh, you test it on an architecture or two, but then it fails on some third, fourth, sixth architecture you don't uh, usually deal with. And um, yeah, with this kind of tests, we'll be able to catch that upfront and not merge patches until all the bits, builds have uh, passed. Okay? Yes, please. So you mentioned the potential leverage the board farm. What ideas, how would you go about doing that? Um, I think I've spoken to Eric on this matter uh, maybe one or two times, but briefly because of a uh, lack of time. Um, I don't know. I, I was hoping that, um, I know Eric is always talking on the weekly meetings uh, regarding this board farm. I haven't personally used it. But uh, it's runtime testing, right? So once we have these sort of things, if we could somehow upload the image somewhere where you could pick it up, run it on a board, give the result back, then we could have a special drone I.O. instance. As I said, we've patched it uh, for this open source work and for non-open source work. So we could have like special instance where it waits until you provide some feedback, so runtime check passed. Yeah, so that's that's something that, technically speaking, could could definitely be done. Now it just depends, like how to how to do it. Any other questions? Um, when when we receive some patches, right? It definitely helped a lot to see whether it compiles. So it's uh, definitely move forward, but. Like I said, we can we can optimize the process even further. Okay, thank you.